Welcome to Banks Unboxing, where every day is Christmas. Today, an $8,000 fuel flow meter. Seriously. I'm Gail Banks. Measuring fuel flow is the holy grail of engine development, engine tuning, supercharging, turbocharging, exhaust systems, cylinder head development, all of it comes down to one thing, brake specific fuel consumption. Well, what does that mean? Well, brake means dyno. Specific fuel consumption has to do with the mass or the pounds or kilograms of fuel you burn to make one horsepower for one hour. Diesels are more thrifty than gasoline engines, but this one value, and in diesel it's about, I use as a rule of thumb, 0.42 pounds of diesel to make one horsepower for one hour. Now that's not real efficient, but if I'm estimating how much fuel flow I need, etc., that's the number I use. If it's gasoline, I use 0.500 or half a pound to make one horsepower for one hour. That's just for estimating. And I use that to determine through the air fuel ratio how much supercharger or turbocharger I might need, how much intercooler I might need. BSFC, the brake spec, as we call it, that's the determiner of so many things. You do air fuel to get the right mixture. If it's too rich, it's real negative, and it hurts the brake spec number. The brake spec number goes up. If it's too lean, that's not good either, and the engine becomes less efficient. You'd think leaning it out would, would be the optimum thing, but you want as close as you can get to a mixture that consumes all the fuel in the cylinder. Engine efficiency can get down to things as elemental as where did you set the timing? Uh, where's the peak cylinder pressure? How much exhaust pressure is there relative to intake manifold pressure? What I call pressure differential across the engine. We'll get into all this stuff later. But the holy grail is the fuel flow. Other than in boats, you really set the throttle and just leave it there for hours. Driving anywhere on land, you're throttling, you're braking, you're maneuvering, whatever you're doing. This is called transience. I want to be able to accurately measure the brake spec fuel consumption, the efficiency of the engine during those throttle transients. In a lot of cases, especially if it's stop and go driving, or if you're road racing, there's a lot of that going on. So far, up to this day, we've not had fuel flow measuring equipment that will track a quick transient, or a gradual one. I'll show you that later, but first, let's have a look at what a Coriolis fuel flow meter looks like. I wanna thank the UPS guy for this delivery, and how do I know it's UPS? There's a logo on the box that says UPS, just, just so you know. So we'll get the Milwaukee out here. We'll open this baby up. Delicate instruments, handle with great care. Oh yeah. So, what have we got? What do I get for $8,000? And oh, by the way, this is just one of two because we're measuring the fuel flow into the engine, into the injection system, and the return flow out of the injection system. All right, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> this is a serious looking piece here. Oh, okay. This unit is made by Andres and Hauser. They do all sorts of instrumentation equipment. 
various types of flow meters as well. I chose the Coriolis meter because it's very responsive, it's very accurate, and the pressure drop from the inlet to the outlet is quite low. This one is calibrated for diesel. We can calibrate it for virtually any other fluid. Uh, you could flow water through this thing, or you could flow honey through, through this thing, and it will measure not only the flow rate, but the density, the pounds per unit volume of the fluid, and the viscosity. So this thing is way more than just a how many gallons per minute or how many gallons per hour am I flowing. We chose it was the half inch version because we wanted to have a low pressure drop and high flow capability. So this thing will flow 400 gallons per hour with nominally a two pound pressure drop. Let me tell you about the Coriolis flow measuring principle. And this is gonna blow you away because this was not invented yesterday. Born in 1792, the French mathematician and physicist Gaspar Gustave de Coriolis was the first to describe the force that history has named after him. Let's look at how this method works. A tube is located inside the flow meter. An exciter causes this tube to oscillate constantly. If there's no flow, the measuring tube oscillates uniformly. Sensors located at the inlet and outlet register this motion. When the fluid starts moving, it causes a tube to twist thanks to the fluid's inertia. Due to the Coriolis effect, the inlet and outlet sections of the tube oscillate in different directions at the same time. The sensors pick up the differences in oscillation in terms of time and space. This is called phase shift and is a measure of how much liquid is flowing through the tube. The higher the velocity, the greater the deflection of the oscillating tube, meaning its oscillations become bigger. The system can also use these calculations to measure the fluid's density at the same time. Old Gustave was a unique cat. He also predicted the motion of spheres when one collides with another. And in 1835, he wrote a book on billiards. And he didn't have a high-speed camera, he had nothing, and he, he described the motion. When the cue ball hits the object ball, did you know that if the cue ball does not come off and go in a straight line? The cue ball comes off and describes a parabola. Knowing this kind of led to the Massé shot. In one form of a Massé shot, you might have three balls along the rail, a cue ball, an interfering ball, and the object ball and it will go around the interfering ball and strike the object ball. This is all in this cat's book. I'm just interested in the flow meter. I don't hang out at Joe's pool hall any longer. Things got a little rough there, and uh, I don't carry a knife or a gun, so I decided to hell with this pool hall thing. At 400 gallons per hour, with diesel weighing nominally seven pounds per gallon, that's 2,800 pounds of fuel per hour. If my brake spec is a 420, notice I've removed the decimal. I'm, most guys do this. It's usually expressed three places past the decimal point, so 0 0.420 pounds per horsepower hour. We call a 420. If you've got 2,800 pounds per hour of fuel divided by a 420, that gives you 6,667 horsepower. So you'd think, all right, this is everything I'm ever gonna do. I mean, 6,000, almost 7,000 horsepower, but wait, there is a little problem. Diesels return some of that fuel back to the tank. Why is that? Diesel fuel is used to cool the injection pump and the injectors themselves, and that fuel mass goes back to the tank. Let's say that 30% of the fuel supplied to, to the engine is returned to the tank. Let's say half the fuel, fuel returns to the tank. I still got enough for 3,333 horsepower. So I think what we've got is two half inch flow meters, one supply, one return. We'll feed that into 
one of our I dash data monsters and calculate what the net fuel usage is. And then from that, we'll calculate a real time brake spec fuel consumption. How'd you like to see what this replaces? 16 pounds in, what do you get? A lot of detonation and deeper in debt. Here we are. We've been building our own fuel flow meters for years. We use them in our dyno cells and in the field as well. A while back, we were asked to help a trucking company save money on their fuel expenses. So we outfitted one of their trucks with this very fuel flow meter and analyzed their fuel consumption under different conditions on the dyno and out on the road. As a result, we designed the precursor to the pedal monster our new throttle booster. But rather than making the pedal more responsive like you'd want it in your pickup truck, we gave the throttle a spongier response so the truck drivers wouldn't use as much fuel. When you have a fleet of hundreds of trucks, every ounce, every gram of fuel counts. Let's follow the fuel flow through this system. Fuel comes in, gets filtered, goes through a gear pump, gets really finely filtered, then to a vapor separator and to a regulator through this cross. The regulator holds the system output pressure to about 15 PSI, which is pretty optimum for the Bosch pumps that we're using, quite a bit below what we need for the Denso pumps, like on the L5Ps. Those were running up to 80 or 90 PSI, so this thing wouldn't even work with a Denso pump. After the vapor is separated, then there are three float chambers. The fuel feeds into these float chambers and from them out to the engine. The return fuel comes back into the system and also goes into the float chambers. So what you end up with is a closed system. The fuel leaves this system, goes to the engine, comes back to the, from the engine, re-enters this system. The fuel coming into the system from the shed is what I call the makeup fuel. This is the fuel being used to actually make horsepower. Gross fuel flow out, return fuel flow back, and what we're measuring is the net fuel flow. This system has what I call lag or hysteresis in it. It takes it a while to stabilize. So it's only good for fixed throttle, fixed power. You get to that point, you let everything stabilize, and generally what we do is we all temperatures stabilize, all flows stabilize, we leave them there for a few seconds, then we start reading the data. So if you're gonna make a throttle change, then you have to wait for this thing to stabilize again. So it's no good for throttle transients. What we're doing with the Coriolis meters should be almost instantaneous fuel flow data. This is gonna revolutionize our tuning accuracy, and it's going to revolutionize the development of the engines, systems, airflow, everything, the geometry, bore, stroke, rod ratio, on and on and on. It's all quantifiable. And the ultimate holy grail of measurement is brake spec fuel consumption. It tells you every time you make a change, if it gets better, you did it right. If it gets worse, you did it wrong. Bye bye, old guy. I got a new baby. Are you okay? Where are we gonna mount you?